Sanremo, in the grand scheme of espresso machine manufacturers, is actually relatively young, coming in at about 40 years old. But over that short period of time, it's become one of the big names you see on a lot of cafe counters. And their flagship machines really stand out in terms of styling and technology, and they've finally shoehorned all of that into a single group, home-focused machine. The aptly named U is designed to give you as much control as possible, with access to a wide array of variables, data, and programming at your fingertips, including real-time direct pressure profiling using a volumetric gear pump. And of course, as you'd expect, all that premium control also comes with a premium price. So today I'll be covering the Sanremo U over my experience in the last couple of months, sharing its features, its performance, and of course, its quirks and downsides. As usual though, in the spirit of full disclosure, the folks over at Sanremo USA sent me the U to test, review, and return. And of course, they agreed to my review terms of no access to this video or the content of this video prior to its release. So with all that out of the way, we're going to dive right into it after a quick word from this video's sponsor, Stand Art Magazine. If you're into coffee, its culture, and learning about the world around it, Stand Art Magazine is the perfect addition to your brew bar or coffee table. With quarterly releases, they shed light on issues both inside and outside of the cafe, highlighting people who elevate the industry, and deep dives into new ideas around all things coffee. To sweeten the deal, each issue also includes a sample of coffee from some of the world's best roasters, to give you the full sensory experience. You can't beat the combination of fresh coffee and fresh print. So head over to standartmag.com slash Prometheus, use the link down in the description or codes Prometheus at checkout to snag $5 off your very own subscription of Coffee & Culture, shipped direct to your door with a money back guarantee. And if you're still on the fence, you can snag your first copy of Standart just with the cost of shipping. So what have you got to lose? Outside of the fact that the U, at least in the simplest of terms, is designed to pressurize hot water through a bed of coffee, there's a lot more going on underneath the surface that isn't quite as straightforward. At first glance, you'll immediately notice a screen, and as you'd likely incorrectly guess, that's where the magic happens. Oh! <laughs> All right, let's quit while we're ahead. I mean, anything beyond that feature is really just a bonus, right? But the main screen does have a lot of basic info, like the brew and steam boiler status. Below that, you've got access to the graphs from your last shot, which shows you the pressure and flow profile. The screen also shows the last shot method, between paddle, manual, or a selected profile. And of course, the details of the last shot, including the milliliters dispensed at the pump and overall shot time. But when you're ready to brew, the bottom section of the screen in the group is where you get all that done. The 1, 2, and 3 buttons are presets, and you can change and swap them around to different profiles. There are 6 standard profiles preloaded on the machine with basic shot styles. There are also 10 custom profiles that can be digitally adjusted, editing each phase of the shot. And the last 6 are designed to be edited through the use of the paddle. And we'll talk more about the custom and paddle profiles here in a minute. The M is the manual continuous dose, which is just a straight 9 bar pull. And the P is the auto group purge. And finally, at the front of the group sits the star of the show, at least in my humble opinion, and that is the paddle. And that can be used to pull your shot from start to finish, allowing you to control the pressure all the way through. The group itself is a modified E61 called the SR61, and it has an internal heating element aimed at creating a more consistent water temperature from brew boiler to portafilter. The hot water tap and steam wand are controlled via these micro switch levers on either side, and finally the 2 liter internal tank is at the very top. And now that we're here and we're only 3 bolts away, we may as well check under the hood. The two stainless steel boilers, a half liter brew and one liter steam, are mounted vertically side by side. And yes, these boilers are pretty small by prosumer standards or even in this same price range, but they did that for a reason, uh, mainly to reduce the energy usage, but also to reduce startup time, with 5 minutes to brew temp and 10 minutes to steam. Now because this machine was loaned to me, I didn't want to dig too deep into it if I didn't have to, but fortunately the folks over at Espresso TV posted a nice video of the internals at the San Remo factory, like the drop panel at the bottom to access the electronics, as well as the sides where the pump and multiple lines run the length of the machine. The pump inside the U is a volumetric gear pump, meaning it controls and tracks the rate of fluid displaced, and it allows you to perform pressure profiling versus flow profiling on mechanical paddles like the GS3. And don't worry, I have a full comparison coming. 
Also, the USB port that's used for updating the machine's firmware can also be used to charge other devices, which honestly is pretty convenient. And lastly, I'd be remiss if I didn't at least mention the companion app for the San Remo. And many of you may already know how I feel about apps on coffee equipment. But the good news is, there isn't anything you can't do on the machine that you can do on the app. So it doesn't really app lock you out of anything, and that's really the main issue I have with apps in general. As we've already seen, there's a lot of technology just shoehorned into this little machine, but the question remains, how does it all perform and does it actually help you make better espresso? Beyond all of its bells and whistles like barista lights, eco modes, and fancy graphs, the actual use of the machine to make coffee is pretty straightforward. Of course, you can pull your straight 9-bar shots or use the standard profiles, but the custom option is one of the more unique features. Each of the profiles can be adjusted in yield, pre-infusion pressure and time, infusion pressure, and post-infusion pressure and amount. But it's worth remembering or at least noting that the yield amount you set will leave you with quite a bit less in the cup, as that number is the measurement at the pump, and it doesn't take into account how much is soaked up by the ground coffee. And of course, don't misunderstand me, I feel like there's a lot of great features in this machine and everyone can have their own favorite, but really the one that makes this machine for me is the manual paddle and the pressure profiling. This gives you a wide array of extraction capabilities, from your traditional 9-bar poles to long pre-infusions, ramp downs, low pressure shots, and basically everything else in between. The movement of the paddle is also very fluid, and the readout on the screen gives you real-time information about the pressure and the flow rate, and once you find a shot that you like, you can easily just save it in one of the six custom paddle slots and run it back using the volumetric programming. And I think it works fairly well, but it's not extremely accurate and usually lands within a few grams. And I find the accuracy level does go up quite a bit, the less amount of fiddling you do during the shot. Though personally, at least in my mind, that falls within the acceptable range for auto repeatability when you're including a variable as kind of wild and unruly as pressure profiling. Also, because of the group head heating element, there is a high level of temperature stability from boiler to group, and a consistent temp throughout the shot, so it's great for those longer extractions. I mean, overall, when it comes to espresso quality, I think we can all agree it depends on more than just the machine. But I've been pulling some great shots on the U for a couple months now, so there's no shortage of tasty espresso when you pair it with a nice coffee, a proper grinder, and a skilled hand. And for my fellow milk drink lovers, the steam provides a decent amount of power considering its small boiler size. The wand itself does give you a nice amount of adjustability, but in terms of usability, there are only two settings, on and off so there can be a bit of a learning curve. In terms of texturing, the stock three-hole tip does apply even pressure and is capable of producing any milk texture you want, from cappuccino foam to silky latte art. As always, when you use the machine day in, day out, or even just once, the quirks and downsides tend to just appear, and the U isn't immune, so let's start with the drip tray. And let's be clear, this is by no means an issue to San Remo alone. I've noticed this trend with a lot of espresso machines where their drip trays are just getting smaller and smaller. Now, I'm not sure if this is purely an aesthetics decision or they're operating on the assumption that everyone will hook it up to a drain. And as you can imagine, if it's not hooked up to a drain, it doesn't take all that long to fill up. And as soon as you see that little red bump begin to peek through the steel grate, you've already gone too far. Removing it and carrying it to the sink is a delicate operation and it feels like carrying a plate full of dirty water. Also, a design thing that I found to be sort of awkward was just how far forward the group itself sits. And because it only comes with spouted portafilters, which also push the flow of water even further forward, where there is literally like an inch from the edge of the tray, it just sort of seems odd, especially when there is a few extra inches of tray underneath the machine itself. So generally, the overall compact design, although attractive, can make the workspace feel a little awkward, a little confined. And honestly, I'd be lying if I didn't say it makes me feel just a little uneasy having all these controls and electronics sitting essentially on top of something that contains both heat and moisture. And lastly, there's that pesky little double-edged sword of technology. Of course, it gives you a wide array of data and control, but it is rather expensive. The San Remo U retails, at least here in the States, for $7,500, which is definitely at the upper echelon of home espresso machine pricing. But with that tech, my main concern is always longevity and repairs, because the more complex these things get, the more electronics and tech things that get put inside these machines, the harder it is for someone to DIY repair and maintain them themselves. 
When the U first landed on my bar, I was definitely impressed with its abilities, and I think there's likely more to come. With hardware like a gear pump, Wi-Fi, flow meters, sensors, and more, I think there's a lot of possibilities for additional updates to its performance in the future. Sanremo themselves have already released one firmware update for the U and likely will continue to do so, and it truly is one of the most feature-dense machines I've used in some time, and almost to a fault. I mean, as you likely already know, I'm kind of a big nerd when it comes to data and control for brewing espresso, and this machine gives you a lot of it, but it can definitely feel a bit overwhelming. But the good news is it can be as complicated or as simple as you want, and even with all these options after the first week, I basically found myself just wanting to run shots using the manual paddle and being the master of my own destiny. Now, the one thing I can't really comment on because of the nature of just short-term loaner machines is I can't really talk much about its reliability and longevity and how that'll all go down. But I can say that over the course of the three months I've had the machine, or two months and a few weeks so far, I haven't ran into anything. But for what it's worth, it does give me some confidence in its overall build quality since it seems to have taken some serious hits in its life as a demo machine and it's still kicking. Anyway, on that note, I think it's time I start wrapping this one up and pass the conversation, as always, on to you. What are your thoughts with the U? And what are your thoughts on the introduction of more tech into espresso machines? Love it, hate it, indifferent? Also, if you're a U owner, I'd love it if you shared your experience with the class, especially if you've had one for more than a few months. So drop your answers to those questions and any others you have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram, at Spermetheus, for content throughout the week. Help support the channel by considering becoming a member for exclusive access. And as always, stay caffeinated. Ponyboy.